What up, you hoochie mamas? We got TJ versus Mr. Football in the P MCS Playoffs Championship. This is a belt game right here, ladies and gentlemen. And TJ, Mr. Football, TJ never won a belt before. Neither of these guys have ever won a belt before. Actually, so we're going to get a first-time belt winner here. And, okay, I'm going to just back that up. There's no analysis here, but just watch this pass from William, William Perry. I, I am confused. Now, the route combo is solid. I do love this route combo. It's very, very good. But look at the pass. What the, what the hell is that? He's facing this way, shuffles it that way, and it goes over here. I don't know. Not really that important. Like, it should have just went over there in the first place, but that's a little odd, I suppose. And he gets down to about the eight. Now, a big thing we've seen in this, in this tournament, really, is the usage of Titan Apprentice on Tony Gonzalez. We actually see, again, very next play right here with a tight end crosser. Let's see what we have here. Going to actually throw that tight end crosser, too. And, yeah, we've seen a lot of corner routes from tight ends. We've seen a lot of crossers, posts. First two plays with TJ on offense right now. We see uh, just two opportunities to utilize that. Now, TJ is in the Jets offensive playbook. Quick throw of the seam. And this is just a really good throw. This is a, just a good, good overall, just like, Madden, where look, the meta defense right now, and Mr. Fall is running it, is this baseline pressed dollar where this guy is coming in the A gap. We got blitz, blitz, blitz. This is your user. So if this guy's coming, this area of the field starts to get isolated where this guy or this guy have to be the people who can defend this. This guy bails, and this guy bails. That seam is wide open. It's something you got to be willing to take advantage of uh, when they give it to you because you can really exploit it. And let's see what happens right here. Yeah, look, look, look exactly what I said. The user can't make it over there in time. That guy is, I mean, he's coming free, but he bailed. This guy can't get there. This guy bailed. So we have this little seam area, just like I just pointed out. This is one of the better ways to attack blitzes. You have to be careful because snap throwing seams is kind of just like, it's not guess passing, but just snap throwing is a tough way to make a living because it's very hard to make the reads consistently and it's kind of a pick waiting to happen eventually. But if you can get good at it, and it is a really, really good way to take advantage of a lot of meta blitzes, no matter what it is, right? If someone's running like DB fire on you and running slot corner blitzes, one of the best ways to attack that is to just throw right over them, pretty much right at the snap. Um, and then on defense, there's ways to adjust around it and it is something that is pretty lurkable. Second of one, we're actually gonna see TJ get into a pretty heavy set here. I form wing. I'm not very familiar with the plays from this. I don't believe there's an RPO, but there's probably some very big hitters in terms of, uh, or heavy hitters, I should say, in terms of stretch. This is going to be power G. Power G a little bit. Oh, uh, let's see if he sticks with the power G. He's going to go to the stretch, actually. Stretch left. Fighting, fighting. Going to fight inside. Henry gets down to the two. Okay. We're going to go hurry up. Time out for Mr. Football. We're going to go power G, it looks like, this time. Unless he audibles over to the stretch again, which I wouldn't be surprised. It looks like he is. Let's see what the stretch looks like here. Motion out Laporta. Boom. Going to let him set. Snap. Going to get stuffed again, actually. Okay, so on the last play, he did get that first down. So he's second and goal from the four. And now, back-to-back -back runs have been kind of stuffed, even though he did pick up a couple yards that first time. They just, it's, it's not looking pretty. So he's going to go into trips tight and offset. We've seen a ton of wide receiver screens from this. I bet he audibles over to uh, trips tight end. We've seen a ton of wide receiver screens, and it looks like that's exactly what he's going to. The bubbles are good, but people are getting good at defending the bubbles, especially in, like, obvious bubble territory. So they've decided to start going to the screens. That run right there gets nothing. Third and goal from the four. Let's see what happens here, because I, I have no idea. X under, he's going to pass. Okay. I don't hate passing right here. I really don't hate any of the play calls so far. It's just really a matter of, like, does... See, like, when you start running to their goal line, a lot of it becomes more about, does my opponent have defense for this, rather than, can I make something happen, I guess? It's like kind of that, like, whereas with some of the pass plays, it's like, you know, can I get the, not even so much that my opponent have defense, but can I make the reads correctly? You know what I mean? Whereas running the ball in this area is a little bit more just hope he doesn't stop it. And Mr. Fall has done, done pretty well. Third and goal. You go with another run. That time gets in. Yeah. And there we go. Uh, pretty easy touchdown. Entire line kind of just crashed in. I thought this backside penetration was going to get through, but doesn't. It looks like he will, but then he just gets hung up right there 
Easy touchdown. You see, TJ has Gurley and he has Derrick Henry at halfback right now. Mr. Football on offense here. He is in the Eagles playbook. And this is a play called Dagger out of Bunch Strong, where I actually don't see this get called very often, but you have this drag right here. He's going to put a streak. And then the tight end is on this little like seam route that breaks into an in route. It's just like a little delayed trail, I guess. It's a, it's a little odd, but it does do... I, I know Mr. Football likes it. You see a tight end route. And he's actually going to be able to, Oh. Oh. That looked like a touchdown, but then he, like, swerved away from that. That was weird. Mr. Football goes back to... Uh, goes to double post here. And he actually has the bomb if he wants it. Ooh. That post... TJ's user went off that post in the last second, and it was open to the deep right of the field. I'm surprised Mr. Football didn't throw that right there. He's had two big play opportunities to the top right. He's going to go right back to the same play. Double post. Quick snaps it. Halfback underneath, throws it. Got to get some rack right here. Chris Johnson gets it to the 31. And now we're moving. You know, we, we see there's double post has so many different, like, setups you could do. And we see Mr. Football using quite a few of them. I think he's going right back to another one right here. But he's going back to, like, this is like the old reliable basic one where essentially you're just snapping R1, the point wide receiver, on a, Oh, that is... Man... That is, that is tough. I don't think that's a good read. But he's just snapping R1 on a streak. And, man, Gronk can't get there. Wow, I thought Gronk could get there. I really did. Dang. I mean, dot, touchdown, all that good stuff. TJ's defense, though, on three plays has a lot of one-play touchdown potentials. Mr. Vola just missed the first two. That's kind of wild. We're going to skip ahead here 30 seconds. And here's a replay of it, actually. That's kind of nuts that three plays in a row, Mr. I mean, that, that is one of those basic plays in bunch. And he's just letting it be open for a touchdown. It, it almost feels like so many people have gotten away from, from that setup right there that Mr. Mr. Football ran because it's such a meta play. You know what I mean? Like so many people are so used to it. And because it's so meta and everyone knows how to defend it, you stop running it. But then TJ like totally forgets about it. Huh. Nonetheless, 7-7 seven, seven ball game, 45 left in the first quarter. And again, we see that tight end cross are being utilized. A route that I really haven't used a ton this year, but it is pretty good. Looks like he tried throwing it away, third and three. And these both these guys are going to be running a lot of pressure up the A gap, probably off the left side quite a bit too. You got to be looking out for this dude coming off this edge, and then this dude right up here. Out of dollar five, uh, FS zone blitz is the play call. We have verticals right here. Boom, quick throws that one. And that's one of the tougher reads of verticals. A lot of people, you know, you can read the crossers, you can read the tight end seam, the halfback, all that stuff's easy to make the read on. The hardest read, and but the biggest thing that you can, like, if you can make this read, you can exploit so many zone blitzes, is hitting that flat wide receiver or that outside wide receiver on his wheel before he turns into a, before he turns into a, or goes upfield. Looking, 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 a throw it away. Looked like he was kind of looking deep right there. And we got some... There's an interesting action right now in offense on, from, from, from everybody, I feel like. It's just been, I don't know. We got something here. Verticals, just out a bunch strong. Doesn't really have anything to go underneath. Got it to Todd Gurley, gain a four. We're going to take this down into the first quarter. 7-7. Seven, seven. Unless, can he snap this? He might snap it. He might. No, end of the first. Pretty big third down here. Let's see what the play call is out of trips tight and offset. Yep. Okay. Tight end. No, he's not going to throw. He's going to go for the deeper route. Oh. Oh, that look, just looked like a bad free form. I'm pretty sure that route is open right there. Right? Check this. Check this. Check this. We have triangle. He's trying to fit it into this seam right here. This guy just peels off. And low key, the way this is positioned, this dude, what, super good pass lead, could be open deep. It looks like that deep middle, uh, deep middle blue. Just didn't get pushed back as far as TJ thought and really should have been a pick. Now it's fourth and six. See what TJ's play call is here. I got to assume it's going to be out of bunch or bunch strong. Probably bunch strong. It's really taking over as like the main passing formation for a lot of people now. Again, he's in, jet, yep, he's in the bunch strong. He's going to motion in. I put him on a streak. Yeah, we're probably going to the very basic. No, weird route combo here. Double corners. I mean, dude, like, if you're going to run zone coverage, if you're going to run zone and you got flat defenders, if you can get these to be some tall dudes, look, this route he's thrown, 
this a million times. We've seen this thrown a million times. But look what happens with the with Jabril Peppers. Oh, I'm sorry, Julius Peppers. He's just so big, he's able to get up there and catch it. Jeez. That's wild, but at the same time, it's like, dude, I mean, he's 6'12", like, dang. Yeah, now Mr. Football, getting ball at half. He's in a really good spot. He's going to start it off with a run play, too. Just get the clock moving. Juke inside. Yep. That Todd Gurley really is a beast. When did he come out? Todd Gurley came out like a month ago, I think. Maybe even slightly longer. Carr's been a beast the entire time. And he's going to go right back to the run game again. I'm surprised he doesn't milk a little bit more, considering he is intentionally running the ball, but it doesn't really matter. You can get down to the 34 now. And if you're, if you're TJ, you got to figure out some way to, to just not let him run the ball. I don't know, TJ's defense in this game has been really bad across the board, truthfully. He's laying up the run, be, the run game's just wide open, and, I mean, he's laid up three bombs, essentially. It's been kind of wild. Uh, Mr. Football to the RPO read. Boom. Going to actually take it. That was, that was a bad. You should have just thrown the bubble right there or handed it off. This is a bad read by him on the play. Pretty basic play. PA crossers now. Tight end corner route. Probably going to streak somebody on the left side. Yep. Got to watch for a little high-low right here between this drag route and this crosser over the middle, right? And this corner route right here could get open in this area, but this route combo is becoming more and more popular now. Very real. I don't think we've seen this route combo. It definitely went on previous Maddens, but or in previous, even like earlier this year, we didn't see it too much. And yeah, TJ just turns on the heat right there. Third 19. This football going to hurry up. Probably going to streak our... No, flip. Let's see. Okay, see, this is another setup of double post. Instead of leaving the uh, double post right here, like this post route that we see so much of, on this double post setup now, we leave the crosser, okay, and we streak this guy, have our tight end on a wheel still. So we're looking for our tight end late, this crosser over the middle, the C route still here on the outside too, behind my face cam. We'll see how he... See how he runs it. Or see what he does. Motions out the halfback as well. Puts one on a drag. Yeah, there's that route combo. I don't love this as much, truthfully. I see a lot of people run it, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. Quick throw to the flat. Good defense from TJ, just making Mr. Football get rid of the ball quickly. And now Mr. Football actually has to make a little bit of a decision. Do you go for it here or do you kick? You're up a stop. You get ball at half, and he is going to kick. That's a smart thing to do, but it always does suck kicking. Yeah, definitely could have ended up way worse for TJ. He could still go into half with the lead. Play calls Y curl, one of my one of my favorite plays to watch out a bunch. And he no. This yeah, I mean this this play is always so good. See, that's where a lot of people be like getting lost on some of these routes, right? So you have a wheel route from your halfback right here. And obviously everyone knows you could throw this wheel route, you know, early. But what you could also do is if you have a clear out route, which you have right here, it's gonna push every deep zone back meaning that this area of the field gets open for the wheel route a little bit later, basically above the, uh, above the zone coverage and potentially above man coverage as well, depending. And you see it right here. See? Look, just passes, passes a zone, but underneath that zone, able to throw it, good pass, possession catch it. You got to be a little bit decent with their pass leading on that, but it's not that hard of a throw. And that's a concept that you're able to... It, it, it acts like it attacks the same area of the field that like a flood concept would attack, right? But you just don't need the corner route. Um, or you don't, you, don't need, you, know, you don't need three routes. Essentially, that wheel acts as the flat and as the corner on it, which is kind of cool. And this play right here is a really good read from TJ. Check left side. So he's running verticals. So we have crosser. We have seam. We have halfback doing whatever. Uh, this guy might be on a drag. doesn't really matter, though. Um, but this guy on the outside is on this flat wheel, right? He's just on a wheel route. And look where he throw, makes this read, though. It's right here, boom, right as he's still on his flat portion, and then he falls down, too, to keep the clock moving, which is smart. That's a tough read. A lot of people miss that read. I miss that read constantly. But if you can start hitting it, semi, at least semi-consistently, I mean, it just throws any sort of zone blitz that comes at you in for a huge loop. Like, you just, you don't have enough defenders to defend everything, basically. It's, it's tough. Boom. But you can't throw it too late because if you throw it while he's cutting up or a little bit after, pass it too far up, that deep zone can make a play on it. So something to keep in mind. Clock is still moving. He got about 10 yards essentially on that one, second and inches. And I mean, both these dudes are in a very, very fine spot in the game right here. All the way over to Trey Open. I'll stand by this forever, dude. Like if you've been someone in the past who's upset that Comp Madden is the same, 
the same plays over and over again, dude. I mean, we've just never seen a more diverse play calling, just call sheet than we do right now in Madden. We really, like, ever, 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 ever. That argument, he calls him out. That argument was more of a thing back, you know, uh, really cr- uh, old gen. Now it's, dude, I mean, we see, I mean, each of these guys have ran three or four formations up to this point and numerous play calls inside of all of them. And if you're saying civil four different formations isn't that much in, in, in a football game, it's like, dude, they only have so many, like, there's, there's only so many plays. There's only so many plays in a game, right? Especially, you know, up to this point. We've seen some trips offset tight end, some bunch, some bunch offset tight end. Oh, I'm sorry, some uh, bunch strong. And then he's also went under center to, the, to some uh, I-form wing right here, going from bunch to trips. And I was always more of a fan of it when people just ran one formation. But I do know, I mean, for the, oh, wow. For the complaint of people just run the same formation all game, all the time, always. I mean, dude, there's, there's a lot of different plays. A lot of different plays getting called nowadays, man. And you'll even see it with, like, just different play calls. I mean, you'll see guys who are elite passers calling inside zone splits now, calling halfback bases, calling RPO bubbles, read options. I mean, we saw Mr. Football run a read option earlier. Let's go pressure, good read, good read. Right on the cut, he hits that in-breaking little drag route from the outside. Clock's still going. I mean, he controls the rest of this game, or the rest of this half. He should go in the half at the minimum, at the minimum tied. Minimum's got to be tied. Let's see what we have. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Throws it away. Okay. Remember, uh, TJ beat Kiv to get here, and Mr. Football beat Strap Guy. Both those breakdowns are live on the channel. And by the way, we're trying to get to 20,000 subscribers, so if you have not hit the subscribe button yet, it does help out a ton. It really does shows YouTube that you enjoy the videos, gets some push to more people like you, helps me out, helps our channel out, helps everybody out. So if you're getting anything out of this, feel free to hit that, uh, the subscribe button if you're not already. 17 seconds left, third and eight, one timeout. Probably can go with a little drag streak post. No, he's not. We have, I thought he might force the tight end, but with the, extra, with the timeout still, you can use it. You just got to be, you got to be smart here. You can't, can't uh, get tackled inbounds. Has to be end zone shots. I don't hate. I mean, you have time for two throws. You really do. And then kick after that. You just need a fast play right here. Let's see. He's going to go tight end corner. Might highball it. Is it open? No. Nothing really there. Throw it away. Good, good, good. Six seconds. I mean, you might go high, like Y curl right here. You have the opportunity to. I think it's tough to not take the opportunity just to call a quick shot. I don't want to play too conservative, but you just can't. You can't let this play take six seconds. It's either there, you highball it, or you just insta throw it away, basically. I'm curious what he does. I think Y curl is low key, not a bad play call right here out of bunch, but he's gonna go over to the bunch strong again. We'll see what he does. Wheel. This is gonna be tough. This feels like a little bit longer developing play, potentially. Let's see. Anything, anything, anything. Got to throw it away. Got to throw it away. Two seconds. He's gonna kick his three. We're going to half 10 10. Not bad. So we got 10-10 here. Mr. Football got ball to begin the half. He immediately flipped his bunch, and then he immediately goes into the RPO bubble, RPO read bubble, which if you guys don't know what the RPO read means, RPO read is essentially it's a read option built into a bubble screen. So instead of where like an RPO alert or uh, some of the other RPOs are like an inside zone or a bubble, the RPO read is a read option or a bubble. And the reason that's important is because if somebody is the read key, they do not play the pass at all. So what you'll see is if this guy was kind of in here, we'd have the read key be this guy out here. It's what, so many, what happens to so many people. And if this guy's the read key, he will never, ever play this bubble. He can't. So essentially, this guy gets eliminated from it. So that's just something to keep in mind where if somebody is the read key, he can't play the bubble. And that's why you see so often against some of these formations, like right there, TJ just hopped on that slot corner. Uh, to try to take away some of the some of the I guess glitches that happen with the with the read key in Madden, you'll see a lot of people kind of just hop literally hop on the corners uh, for that, which is a little bit different. Something that's a little bit newer this year. Then we're in the second half, and that is just Mr. Football's sixth pass attempt so far. He really just hasn't been on offense too much. Double corner routes here on the left side, uh, tight end hot route corner, and then mesh flat spot outside corner. Boom. Let's see. He's going to motion the halfback out. Here's what the route comes up in. Just a little fade. Okay. Don't foresee that. Getting, oh, no. He's going to drag and zig on the backside. Okay. I like that. Nothing really there. Got the drag underneath. Gain a seven. And it's four for seven. Exactly 100 now. 
Let's see him audible over to the... He's going back to the RPO read bubble. And you can literally see exactly what I'm talking about. This guy's the read key now, meaning that this guy cannot defend this bubble. He can't. He's going to glitch inside, meaning the bubble's going to be wide open. This guy and this guy are going to have to play it. So you'll probably see TJ hop on that guy right there. You'll probably see TJ user this dude for a second or move this guy out to try to replace that read key. The read key is a huge bug in the game where the read key only plays the run. And yeah, you kind of see exactly what I'm talking about. But that's actually a super good adjustment because look what, look what TJ does. So this guy can't, doesn't play it, but TJ actually mans up his linebacker onto this dude, right? And so it looks like the bubble's there because this guy glitches in. You see him running down, but look at Rob Gronkowski. Gronk gets all the way down. Boom, boom, perfect. Now he did gain two yards still, but great defense. That's a really good, like, like that is a, that's one of the ways you can adjust your defense though to take away kind of a meta concept and being a little bit adjusty, but not, not doing anything too crazy. He's still running his exact defense. He's just manning one extra dude up. Sends pressure, quick throw to the flat. Mr. Football does third and seven. And now TJ's got a real chance to actually get off the field here. We're going to see verticals. Ooh, I, what is this route combo? I, man. Okay. I mean, you just, just immediately sprints out William Perry. Nice. Mr. Fall now going to the bunch. Okay. No, he's going to go back to regular bunch here. Just call it inside zone split. Nice. Juke move, juke move. I mean, guys, you can see just how good these juke moves are. He's actually going to get out from it, too. Wow. If you're not juking, you're not trying to run the ball, man. You're really not. Inside zone split just to the boom, boom. Tutty. Tutty, tutty. 17 10. TJ's back in offense. Gets screamed at immediately. Can't get it off either. TJ for 21 pass attempts. So definitely a big. He's just had a. Just been on the, his offense been on the field way, way longer. What's he called? Corner strike? Does he go double corner routes here to the left side? We got. No. Oh. Man. I. Am a believer that that probably should have been a lurk. If you are throwing it that close to the, I mean, I mean, boys, I don't know if there's a world in competitive Madden where this can't, where this results in a catch, right? Am I crazy for thinking that? That can't ever result in a catch. This is a bad read. That's Car Carmichael's humping this dude. Oh, oh, and then getting, he got, oh, oh. Oh, 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 man. Oof. Yeah, that is, that's a dot. That's a dot, boys. Motion that half back out. C route to the right side, probably. Let's see. Show your play art. He does not show his play art that often, I feel like. Yeah, he didn't even show his play art at all. That's so odd. Pressure again. Mr. Ball just really setting the four-man pretty consistently at, at TJ here, and Able to, able to knock the ball loose right there. Back to bunch strong again for TJ. Double corner routes. Got it this time. Remember, that's that same concept he threw a pick on early. And dude, that pick, I mean, geez. Ends up being big. Really does. Really does, dude. We'll see what he does. Every single time you see how these guys are pretty much audibling, dude. They audible almost every single play. Almost every play is an audible of some sort. Pressure again. Good quick read. Tony Gonzalez. Good to gain a five. Gets us underneath two minutes now in the third quarter. I'm surprised we haven't seen TJ attack that left seam again like he did early on. Corner routes. It's going to be a forced throw. Big feet. No, sir. That's a tough throw. Corner routes to the short side are really, really good at being zoned. But when the user's there and you have to like high ball above the user, but before the out of bounds marker, it's just tough. Tough to fit that in always. Let's go drag, streak. Yep. Yeah, we see that combo all the time now. Same side, drag, streak, post, flat. Might be an RPO of some sort right here. Wouldn't be surprised. No, he's going to go inside zone. Okay. Oh, his DN's glitched. Jeez. One of the worst things in this game. Your defensive line glitches so much in this game. It used to glitch way more in the beginning, I feel like, where they like just can't move pre-snap, so it doesn't let you pinch them. Very annoying. Probably go back to the inside zone, I'd assume. Yeah, I feel like you have to. Do you pass this? I think you just, nah, you don't pass this. Pressure, dot, catch, touchdown. Good out. This is a basic combo. We see this a lot out of trips, especially in the red zone. 
Uh, we have, you just have a bunch of trip sets. Flat, in route, crosser. Right here doesn't really matter. It might be a corner route. Right here doesn't matter. It might be this, right? And then you just literally, literally one of the big reads is immediately, do you have the inside guide? No, do you have the in route then? And right here you can see, in route, open. Users almost there, but not. 17-17. And this, with, where there's five and a half minutes left in this game. Five minutes, 43 seconds. So Mr. Football can't even clock the entire game right here. So it's going to come down to probably like a last second drive from TJ. Yeah, football's all the way down to the wing slot. Just get this one started. Got to motion across all the way. Get an extra blocker to the left side. Cut it up. Nothing really there. Gurley gets dragged down. Second and nine. Yeah, I mean, he might go this entire championship game without even getting to 15 pass attempts, huh? How many is he at right now? Fo Mr. Football's at like eight or nine or so. He has always been, uh, something I've noticed about him is that he's always been willing to run the ball at a, at a pretty high clip. But it's not like, he actually does a really good job. So many people, when they get into the running the ball mentality, they do a really bad job of also passing and passing at a high clip with it. He runs and passes at a pretty high clip. Someone else who like used to do that at a pretty like pretty well was like Drini, but Drini wasn't as good of a passer. And they're that like man, football or I'm sorry, TJ's defense just leaving open this post route and double post consistently, man, just consistently leaving that open. That is shocking. That is just it's bizarre. I'm very surprised, dude. I'm very surprised. Seventeen, seventeen, trio week runs okay nothing really there William Perry you gotta get down or throws it away okay smart yeah the biggest thing you can't do there is get caught in like that no man's territory with your quarterback try going down can't go down fumble dude that's what happened to young Kiv in the in the last game in his last game rather let's see what he does here second and ten motion them in okay what we have uh, got it. Oh, okay. See, I don't love this route combo to me. This route combo to me just looks so ugly. It's one sec. We'll, we'll, we'll look at it. This, it, ah, uh, this just looks ugly, man. And man, I mean, I look at the basics. It's a crosser or I'm sorry, drag crosser. This is a clear out, right? But then we have this kind of muddying up this and I, I want to see how this actually runs. This is to play dagger out a bunch strong nasty. Again, Eagles playbook. Man, does it just look ugly. And I mean, ah. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I mean, drag crosser attacking one side of the field is pretty basic, but man, everything on the right side just pff, starts to muddy up. Good defense from TJ, though. Gets him to a fourth and 10. Get home to a field goal. And TJ is actually in a really nice position to potentially, I mean, he, the game's in his hands. It really is. He's probably going to start this off with a run. I got to assume he's on his own 15-yard line here. Probably just wants to get the clock moving because the clock... No, he's going to pass, actually. Okay. Clocking this game is pretty, pretty easy. And, I mean, he missed that drag early. Gets it late, though. Okay, so essentially works out the same as a run. I got to... Oh, he's going hurry up. See, this is... This, I think he actually tweeted about this after the game where he, he was kind of upset with himself for his clock management, I think, on this drive. And this is a play call we don't see him call ever either. Uh, ah! Oh, oh, man. Bring back... I mean, dude, people can say what they want about users used to being... Like, users used to be overpowered. My brother... I mean, it's, it's tough for me to look at this ball and not say that they get... Like, because he's pressing Y around right here. And the animation should attack the ball. But instead, the animation sucks him back underneath this wide receiver. Man, I get the old sayings of, like, the, the users used to be too good. I get that. But at the same time, dude, I mean, I can't imagine they should be this, this bad. Uh, I don't know. Oh, that's tough. Pushes them out of bounds. Stops the clock. Just under four minutes now. 342, second and one. There's that underneath read to the flat, by the way, that we talked about. That's a tough read to make, but if you can make it against zone blitzes on a bunch of verticals, really, really good. Why doesn't it run the ball? Nothing there, nothing there. Going to stop the clock. No, it takes a big sack. Okay, you need William Perry to throw that ball away. But, brother, let the clock run, because look, look at the time situation. There, there's nothing you gain from snapping the ball this fast, unless you're just trying to catch his defense off guard. 
which you do, I guess. It works. But man, take your t- take your time here. You could you could get this game into two minute warning status v- within two plays. He, he's not. Throws it away, stops the clock. And he's in field. I mean, he's eight yards away from field goal range. Not even. So it's not like, man, ah, now it's second and 10. It's hard to argue to run the ball, but the clock stopped now. You, mm, mm. Bad, 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 bad clock management there. Because you, you, like, the game is in your hands. You have a belt in your hands right here. Whatever you want to do, you can make happen. Let's see what he does. Pressure, high ball. No, that's a KO. That's a pretty basic one, honestly. Surprised he threw it. But yeah, we could be at the two minute warning by now. And he's at third and ten. Oh. Dang. It's hard though. I mean, it's it's way easier being in my position just watching like this is like backseat quarterbacking, basically. When you're in the moment, dude, sometimes like you have so many things going on in your head, so many different just just variables, and you just kind of overlook a, a very small one sometimes. It's just part of it. You see it in real sports all the time, too. You see it with a real team's clock management as well. Now, something to note is that Mr. Football is backing off both of his slot corners. This is a slot. This is slot. He's in baseline press, but he manually backs them off. Um, This is a thing that they will do to help the blitz come in. It's just a weird counter to some of the blitz pickups, and uh, it doesn't actually work right there, but it is something that that is pretty common now. Juke move, got up, falls down now. So you see right there is like you're trying to keep the clock moving type thing, which is good. Here, we're going to get it all the way down to like 207 before you snap it. Just run the ball. Take it to a two-minute warning. Run the ball, take it to a two-minute warning. Ideally, you, you get a run that gets you some good yardage, and he's going to do that. And you're able to run it again on second down, but we'll see. Because, yeah, we got to go to a two-minute warning right after this. Boom. Oh, I'm surprised he didn't throw the screen, actually, but, I mean, got a bunch of yards. See, that's where it's like your whole play call sheet is now at your disposal. Two-minute warning. Good. I Man, if you can go back to another, I don't know what, what like, if you got a run, that you know won't get blown up or an RPO or something, I think that's a play call here. Because you're not necessarily trying to, you know, get a big chunk of yardage right here. The first down is really what we need. But at the same time, we want to avoid we want to avoid getting to a third down. Just because third down leads to fourth down, and that gets scary. Let's see. Pressure, pressure. Throws it away. Intentional grounding, too. Intentional grounding. Back it up. Jeez. Oh. Oh. Third and 14. We got a bunch left side. Possible C route to the right. Right behind my, right on top of my face cam, probably. Motions Tony G over. Uh, Tony G on a, there was a C route over there. I thought he could have thrown the C, he could have thrown the C route. Oh, he gets a, okay, fourth and sixth. Dang, he could have thrown the C route right there. Check this out. Boom. Ah, uh, they bumped, so it really shouldn't have been open, but it was. This C route is is definitely open right here. Ah, but he doesn't. Throws a drag underneath. Good catch. Good fight. Got knocked out of bounds, so stops the clock, and he's probably gonna. I mean, you gotta get a stop regard. If you see the thing is, like, a lot of people be like, oh, just kick your three here. If you kick three here, you have to get a stop, right? If you don't kick three here and you don't get it, you gotta get a stop. So regardless, you we're in, we gotta get a stop territory no matter what. And I like my offense to get six yards more than I like my defense to get a stop. But not even about having good or bad defense. Just do you think your offense gets six yards more likely than your defense gets a stop? So you definitely go for this. Five wide. You're going to get pressure picked up pretty well. Got, <gasps> Bo Jackson just made a great play. Literally, Bo just makes a great play. That's gonna, it's six. Oh, he has it too. It's a good read. He's trying to throw it in this area, but look at Bo. He's lighting up right here. I'm actually shocked Bo Jackson makes this play. Look at the range. Like, that's honestly, I think that's kind of wild. I thought that was a good throw. Maybe a high ball or something, but I really felt like that was a good throw. Jeez. Football's going to go up 10 points, but TJ does have two timeouts, and he has the onside kick, potentially. Wow, yeah, watch the replay right here. I mean, he, I mean, the like hindsight says you can go underneath right here. He, I mean, this is, oh, I've, I've thrown this ball a million times. This is an open throw. It's just Bo Jackson makes a great play. Maybe a better pass lead slightly. Jeez. Hey, still not, I mean, you're not out of this game yet, though. I'm really, you, like, I will, 
Okay. Okay. The pick six was the uh, worst case scenario. Can't lie. Because now you need to go get seven, get a stop, then get three. Or vice versa. But not out of this game yet. Onside kicks are a real thing. You've got two timeouts. So as long as you score points before about 45 seconds or so, you could argue that you'll get the ball back for a moment. So we'll see. Let's go. Hat back wheel. Going to get nothing there. Throws that one away. Third and 17. Minute 27. Remember, boys, this is a belt game. Look at those, both those slot corners backed off again. Helps pick, helps this blitz come in. It really does. But it's bad run defense, so it's obviously, right, having these dudes backed off. But in this situation, it doesn't really matter. Is the emotion I was halfback, maybe? No. And, and it's really not helping him in this case, but it is something people do to help. Going to get out of bounds. Yup, got it. Picked up the first two. Big deal. 40 pass attempts for him. How many does... Football does not have 20 pass attempts yet, does he? Gurley, though, of the 20-something completions, Gurley has nine receptions. One of the best ways to get better at passing, dude, you start getting your halfback more involved. Very, very, very good. Let's see what he does here. It's PA crossers. Nothing. Sacked. Dang. You might just call a timeout here. You're, you're getting close to just having to call a timeout and just saying onside kick or I lose. Let's go. 55 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Everything else has to be timeouts. It's all on to the onside kick. And yeah, even throwing the out routes, like, I mean, I get it, but dang, it's tough. You might go double corner route to the right. No, he's just going short corner. Drag underneath. Tony G out of bounds. Goal here now, simple. Like, get into field goal range, kick your three onside, get seven the next drive. That's all, that's all it really comes down to now. Getting seven isn't a priority on this drive. Just get three. Get your, you got to get to your next possession as fast as possible. You got to, and then just go from there. Let's see. Deep, you got, you got to attack deep somehow. At the very least, get into field goal range. Double corner routes. Throws the Tony G. Bang. Right here, you kick three. This is a kick three right here. I, TJ's thinking right now. I'm so surprised he doesn't kick this right now. I, I'm, I'm really shocked. Maybe you go like one deep play. Maybe a couple. But, I mean, you... you ah. Yeah, maybe, maybe you go for some deep, but like you need all the time you can get. Boom, throws it away. Good pressure from Mr. Football. And yeah, I mean, if there's any pressure right there, I think it's smart. Make him, make him get rid of the ball fast. Anything tackled in bounds just kills TJ's chances, or really hurts him, rather. Let's see, bunch strong again. Audibles to it. Little corner out somewhere. Let's see it, quieting the crowd. Low loud here in whatever stadium this is nowadays. It's not Campbell's chunky noodle soup. Nothing there. Roll out William Perry. But like that's why I'm saying kick that three earlier when you're at like what 50 seconds. Now we're under 30. Which if you kick right now, that kick goes through with about 24 seconds, give or take. Onside, if you recover it, you have 24 seconds to get into field range, which is tough. Or get a touchdown rather, which is tough. Compared to 50 something seconds, much more reasonable. Kicks it up. He goes through at 26. Okay. Comes down to an onside now. Let's see. I feel like, was TJ part of an onside in the last tournament? Or was that Abram? I can't remember. He's going with the high kick one. Let's see. Boom. Up. Randy. Got it. GG's. Just like that, Mr. Football is a belt winner. Boys, if you've not hit the subscribe button yet, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you want to get better at John Madden football, no better place to be than civil.gg. Code premium, link in the top description. Get 25% off everything on the site. One membership unlocks literally the entire, entire website for everybody. All right, boys, enjoy. I'll see you in there.